A very warm welcome to all of you. We are delighted to have you here and thank you for taking time from your busy schedules to gather here. I'm Aparna Jain and along with my friend Pooja Parmar, we'll be your host for today. Pooja, when was the last time you saw so many women under one roof? Um, I don't think in the last two and a half years on. I think that alone, alone deserves a loud round of applause. I will quickly introduce myself. I'm Aparna Jain, working with Multiple since the last two years now as part of their portfolio management function. Uh, I closely work with uh, Nitya also, she's part of our team here. So just shout, uh, giving her a shout out. Um, I am a proud feminist and a lot of jokes uh, which are stereotypical and cliche have been made about it, but I still stand by it. And I love the idea of constructive conflict. That's why WinP's unique goal of driving diversity and inclusion in the investing ecosystem really talks to me. Multiples is a, part, a proud partner of WinP in this journey, and we also endeavor to drive diversity in our portfolio companies through our own initiatives. Pooja, please introduce yourself. Sure. Thanks, Aparna. Hi, everyone. This is Pooja Parmar. I work with uh, Equanimity Investments, which is an early stage sector agnostic venture capital fund. I have been a part of this ecosystem for almost five years now. And uh, being a part of WinP was a very natural uh, phenomena for me uh, because it's one of my personal goals in life to empower women. So in any way that I can contribute back, uh, so WinP was quite uh, natural uh, for me that way. I think uh, like Aparna, uh, it's our second year uh, as ambassador to WinP, uh, very uh, fulfilling experience here. And uh, today at this event, She Shines, uh, I'm looking forward to interacting with uh, each one of you. So thank you so much again for joining us here. <laughs> so, uh, Aparna, I think I'm going to pick on the joke that you made about uh, stereotype and cliche feminism. What's that, Pooja? <laughs> So um, I'm all for feminism too, but um, if uh, I were a startup and uh, I would get a bump in my valuation every time the term feminazi was used for anything that has got to do with um, diversity and inclusion, I think I'd be a unicorn by now. And that too, a fastest growing unicorn. <laughs> Yeah, that is true. I think feminism is just common sense, right? Like take a uh, gender pay gap, for example. Instead of paying women the same as men, if you paid men the same as women, just think how angry they would get. Indeed. <laughs> Amongst us in the audience, we also have other WinP ambassadors like Pooja and I. Uh, can they just wave out to the audience, please? I will also call out Trina and Ankita, without whom none of the events at WinP can be complete. So uh, I think a, a lot of you would al already be familiar with WinP uh, work, but I'm going to take this opportunity to share a little about WinP and you know how the journey has been uh, so far, and you know what are the key achievements that they've been able to uh, make. WinP is one of its kind not-for-profit setup with the objective of enhancing gender diversity within investing and entrepreneurship, increasing the participation of women as investors, capital allocators, and entrepreneurs. WinP uses, uses a multi-pronged strategy to achieve its objective with an emphasis on building the ecosystem to support gender balance. It offers resources for women, including a one-on-one -on -one mentorship program run in partnership with Russell Reynolds Associates, I will just call out Vinita. She's amongst us here as one of the table hosts. <laughs> Allyship, networking, leadership development workshops, career boot camps, master classes, you name it. Launched in Feb 2020 at the outset of the pandemic, WinP has already organized more than 35 events that attracted approximately 4,500 registrants and were polled with an average satisfaction score of 96%. In parallel, WinP has brought together PVC firms and PVC-backed companies committed to achieving gender balance to form a common agenda. With these firms, WinP is achieving outcome-oriented changes in practices and policies, 
targeted at making the work environment equitable and transforming the culture in the ecosystem. WINPI members include DFIs, large pension funds, global and regional PEVC firms, and leading advisors. I will just share a little bit about my personal experience with WINPI so far. Uh, it's the second year of my association with them. I'm part of their second cohort. And I think it's just tremendous that uh, you know, being, outside, being an outsider in the uh, industry, you kind of find a community. Uh, you know, my shared interactions with Nupur so thus far, it's a lot to learn and you know, it's, it's been very inspiring just to kind of get to know her. Plus it just opens up a whole lot of gates in terms of you know, finding those senior women whom you can you know, look up to as role models and get to know that you know, what is the career path that you can find for yourself that is a right fit in this industry, which can otherwise, you know, you, uh, because it's so male dominated, it can be a little isolating. Pooja, please share a little about uh, She Shines and what this event is uh, all about. Sure. So in this event, uh, WinPi She Shines is an in-person networking event for women in investing and uh, entrepreneurship. Uh, and we plan to have uh, six uh, monthly networking uh, sessions in each city, that is uh, Mumbai, Bangalore, uh, Delhi, NCR. Uh, so that it's not just like a one-off event and uh, we have the opportunity to expand uh, connections, deepen our connections uh, through these uh, regular uh, meetings. Uh, the importance of building strong networks cannot be underscored too much. The number of women in investing and entrepreneurship continues to be small and imperative for everyone to know each other, support each other and leverage each other is that much stronger. She Shines is born out of Winpi's desire to encourage women to meet old friends and make new ones, um, and uh, engage in valuable, candid conversations with industry colleagues. So for today's event, uh, we have a panel and uh, roundtable discussions with senior uh, leaders and champions. Before we get started, we want to thank Nucleus Business Park and Shivani Lorai for partnering with us today. <laughs> Nucleus Office Parks is the operating platform for fully owned uh, by Blackstone offices in India. Nucleus Office Parks current portfolio includes over 16 million square feet of grade A commercial spaces spread across Mumbai, Bangalore, NCR, Chennai and Ahmedabad. The experienced Nucleus Office Park team works to transform and manage marquee assets that are landmarks in the skyline of cities where they stand. Nucleus Office Park focuses on creating value for customers, partners, patrons and investors. I am just going to call out uh, Shivani to speak a little about uh, One Green Mile and you know the ESG focus which uh, uh, Nucleus Office Park has and uh, some of her uh, own uh, thoughts about Nucleus Office Park. Thank you. Uh, firstly, a very warm welcome and there's something always so special about uh, the kind of energy that is there when just women are around together. It's warm and it's high. So uh, thank you so much. Uh, I think my, even if you're tired, I think uh, just the energy with all of you together just lifts you up. So thank you so much. One Green Mile uh, was a strong initiative by Blackstone and uh, Blackstone globally took two such uh, uh, projects up. One was in, uh, in New York and the other is here in Mumbai. Uh, and the objective was really to create an equal street when we took these two properties up of uh, uh, India Bulls, which is uh, one world center and uh, one international center. We realized that uh, there's a lot of encroachment. Uh, there's no uh, space for pedestrians, uh, illegal parking and so on and so forth. And that's when we approached uh, the government of Maharashtra who very uh, happily welcomed welcomed us with open arms and gave us 100% support. Uh, and that's when the idea of One Green Mile came. And there, was a, there were a lot of uh, dead spaces under the flyovers which we felt we should give back to the community. Uh, we've created four parks under the flyover, Vachanale, which is uh, unique to Mumbai, uh, an under flyover uh, you know, studying area. Uh, Parel Bagh, which is again open for children as well as the elderly. Uh, and then we have the Green Isle. Um, we've also created uh, almost uh, two kilometers of uh, cycling track and uh, pedestrian track uh, uh, and planted close to 20,000 uh, shrubs uh, across the uh, mile. So that's uh, 
purely from our focus towards ESG. In fact, this partnership with WinPE is also a step towards that to encourage and motivate uh, women who are aspiring to be like yourselves and to really understand how is it that you can grow within uh, uh, a subtle sexism that is there, uh, and I may say that here in this forum, it is there, it's existent, uh, and how do you grow through that uh, and, uh, and actually pull yourself up? And that was what our uh, key objective was to partner with uh, WinPE. Uh, so thank you so much, uh, ladies, and we intend to do this every quarter. Uh, our next partnership with WinPE will be in July. Uh, while she shines continues every month, we will partner again in July and look forward to seeing you. Thanks, Shivani. Thank you. None of our speakers here to need any introduction, but to get our fireside chat started, Pooja, please introduce our eminent guests. Sure. So in uh, today's panel, we have two veterans from the investing industry. Uh, we first have Anjali Bansal, founder of Avana Capital. Anjali has been the non-executive chairperson of Dana Bank, a global partner and MD with TPG Growth Private Equity, responsible for investments in India, Southeast Asia, Africa, and the Middle East. Anjali has invested in and mentored various successful startups, including Delivery, Urban Company, Darwin Box, Nika, Lenskart, and Coverfox. She has been appointed on the Expert Advisory Committee for the Startup India Seed Fund Scheme announced by the Honorable Prime Minister. Anjali is a member of the Steering Committee advising the government on Open Network for Digital Commerce. She also serves as an independent non-executive director on several leading boards including Tata Power, Voltas and Piramal Enterprises. She has been appointed as President of Bombay Chamber of Commerce and Industry and serves on the CII National Committee on Corporate Governance. She has been listed as one of the most powerful women in Indian business by India's leading publications, Business Today and Fortune India. May I please request Anjali to please come on stage and take a seat and let's hear it up for Anjali. Our next panel speaker is uh, Ashu Suyash, founder and CEO of Colosa Ventures. Ashu has over 33 years of experience in Indian financial services and the global information services sector. She has led several Indian and global businesses as CEO over 17 years. During her career, she has set up many new companies and ventures and grown complex regulated businesses. Ashu was the CEO and MD of Krizil Limited and a member of the operating committee of S&P Global. Ashu has recently founded Colosa Ventures to create an innovative and unique platform for women entrepreneurs and women-focused businesses. She is an independent member of the boards of HUL and Kotak Mahindra Bank and serves on the governing board of the National Institute of Securities Market and the advisory board of Asima Charitable Trust. Over the years, Ashu has received several awards and has been recognized among the top 50 women in business in India and Asia. Thank you so much for coming in, Ashu. May I please request you to come on stage and uh, let's hear it up for Ashu. Thank you. To host the discussion with Anjali and Ashu, we have Nupur Gar, the founder of WinP. Nupur is a leading investor in PEVC and an expert advisor to large institutional investors. Nupur's experience spans over private equity investing, operations, and finance in leading global organizations like IFC, Discovery Networks, and PwC. Nupur is an independent member of the IC at the Fund of Funds managed by NIF and uh, an advisor and member of the IC for the Dutch Good Growth Fund. She's the chairperson of Kids Clinic India that manages the Cloud9 chain of hospitals and serves on various boards as an independent director. She has been an external expert for the government of India's fund of funds for startups. Nupur has several, several recognitions like BWVC World Most Influential Women 2022, Forbes India, WPAR Self Made Women 2020, and India's Top 100 Women in Finance, AIWMI 2019. Please give a loud round of applause to Nupur. <laughs> No, put the stage is yours. Let's get the discussion started. <laughs> 
Please tell me how to switch this on. <laughs> I think first. Bill, turn it on, I think. It's on. Okay. You can hear? Is it working? It's working. It's working. Okay, thank you. So good evening, everybody, and uh, thank you for being here. A very warm welcome um, from all of us at Vinti, and a big shout out to Pooja and Aparna for organizing this wonderful, wonderful event. You know, with young women like this, you sort of know the industry. Okay, I'll say that again. With young women like this, you know the industry is in safe hands. Absolutely, these are the future. So thank you once again, and uh, let's get started. And I know this is a topic that is close to your heart and your heart, and I think it is a topic that is of extreme importance to every woman professional. It is about networking and why networking is so important for everybody's professional growth. But before I start, we have sent out uh, two emails um, with a booklet containing names and profiles of people, of, of the women who are attending today. How many of you went through that booklet? And how many of you sort of made a list of women that you wanted to meet and sort of focus your energy? Okay, fewer than that. And I think that is, that is where we need these two stalwarts to guide us, right? How do you maximize this? But before, you know, we get into the tips, I think the first question is why? Really is networking important? Everybody says networking is important, but why? Um, I think for various things, right? And you made me think when you sent the email with the list of questions to think about. So first and foremost, networking is not about how many business cards you have. It's how many relationships you build. And relationships are not transactional. They don't get built in one meeting. They get built over a period of time particularly if you have shared interests, shared objectives, and a shared desire to learn and help each other. So the network really is, is a, from a node to node point of view, it's many to many, and you give into the network, and you don't know when you will receive, back and from where. So let it go, give in, and you shall receive. Why is it important? Because I think that's what gives you sustenance. For me, I have found, uh, in my career journey, which I still have, I think, at least another 20 years ahead of me, is my best sources of sustenance, my learning, my energy, my collaboration. I've had wonderful colleagues inside work, inside the firms that I have been in, and outside the firms I have been in. And I think it's out, both internal and external networks are very important. And I can talk more about that. You know, I spent my early years, first, as an engineer, where you obviously in a lab, you don't build networks other than your circuit board. <laughs> But then after that, whether it was McKinsey or Spencer Stewart, the nature of my work was such that it created a network. How to take it beyond, that is what I will come back to. We'll talk again. So first off, it's so nice to meet everybody in person. So congratulations, Nupur, for making this an in-person event. I don't think networking through a Zoom or a webinar would have done any justice to the topic. Right? At the same time, at the same time, I think one of the biggest boons for women in particular has been the COVID phase and Zoom and you know Microsoft Teams, etc. Because it's just made networking a little easier. And uh, I personally believe it has changed the quotient on networking for a lot. And we'll talk about it as we discuss and I have plenty of stories to share around that. Uh, your question on, you know, why networking? I look at networking as central to the job you do. And the moment you start looking at it from that lens, you stop associating it with socializing and you stop equating it to the boys club. And why do I say that? Nobody does their job in isolation. Right? There is no one person company or one, the word team is more than that. What is networking? It is end of day, the day connecting. 
it is connecting internally and connecting externally. And we can throw terms like transactional at it or we can throw terms as strategic at it. It is about intent. But what is central to the concept beyond saying it is core to your job is it is the only formal way of building informal strong relationships that help you strengthen business connections. I know it sounds like jargon, but that is the way I explained it to myself and I am sharing with you what I explained to myself because believe you me, I had no time for networking. But the day my brain processed it as part of the job, the way I looked at it changed. And the moment you begin to look at it as part of your job, planning becomes central to it. The moment planning becomes central to it, choices become par for the course. And the moment choices become par for the course, you do not look at it as a pain. And to my mind, the last couple of years has changed the way women look at networking. But when I look at the 80s when I started the job, people thought networking was equal to going to the pub. Right? It was not and I am really grateful to my first boss who simply said that is not networking. Let me tell you what networking is and I will share this with all of you. Simply said networking is choosing one person you will connect beyond your immediate team either at a lunch break just to check how the person is and get to know the person. That made it easier. That did not even make it sound like that whole pub. At the same time, today, I mean 33 years later when people throw back at me as a new venture capitalist, how will you, do you have a boys network to leverage? I want to throw a lot of stuff at them. <laughs> right? So things do not change just because it is us women, words like boys, club, networks and the whole concept of is it transactional, is it strategic happens. But if you take those connotations out and go back to the core that you want to do well at your job, then. So Ashu, I think that is very powerful because there are a lot of these negative perceptions like you said transactional, opportunistic and um, you know, I have seen this and I have been through it myself. My, some of my earlier roles did not require me to be out there at events and getting to know people. But this industry is all about knowing people, right? So you know, early days, it was uncomfortable. You enter a room and then you're like a week into the industry, you don't know people in the room. So what do you do? And today when I go to such events uh, and I see a woman standing in a corner, fiddling with a phone, a woman trying to nurse a drink, you know, making a call. And sort of reminded of my own days because you don't know what to do. So, are there any tips, <coughs> any strategies that you can share with these women here? Because now that the world is opening up, and we have to get away from the comfort that Zoom gave, and into you know in-person events, which will be gender agnostic, and will have lots lots of valuable strangers who will be great networks. So, I'm going to be a little contrarian. Mm. I think the first thing to leave at the door of any room you enter is your gender. Great, absolutely. Leave your gender at the door. Yeah. Forget somebody else is a man, you're a woman. It's hard to do because they are not forgetting. Right? You're still being seen as <laughs> her. Um, I'm also an avowed feminist, unabashedly. And I think age gives you the liberty to do a little bit more. Uh, I've been on the soapbox for more years than I can remember about inclusion and inclusion is more than gender but let's say gender is low hanging fruit right 50% of the world is female why the heck is it a minority i mean it's laughable that it's a minority 
unfortunate reality is it is a minority in the workplace and hence it does require our, our men friends may say but you know affirmative action yeah, that's fine that's okay own it we are okay with that if it required legislation to bring the number of women in boards so i started the first program for women in boards before the companies act you know vinita is here she'll remember it and we had phenomenal response the success of that program is today we don't need it anymore so for this industry nupur you had a very pointed question what do you do when you enter a uh, enter a room leave your gender at the door go talk to uh, go talk to everybody anybody and if you see a woman standing in a corner go first talk to her we can solve our own problems and trust me some of our best champions for my generation right our champions sponsors mentors were all men so there are so many wonderful men who you must enlist as part of your network and not be diffident it's not required to go hang out at the bar but if you want to go hang out at the bar that's also fine so there's no judging around either way you want to play golf on sunday mornings go for it you don't want to play golf on sunday mornings that's also fine so you have to find your own authentic rhythm find your friends you won't convert everyone but some people will become friends there are more nice guys out there than i won't use the word but the not nice guys right so there are more nice guys out there one two is we there's this thing around he for she let's first do she for she there is a whatsapp group yeah let's do she for she it's my absolute mantra it's very hard for women to say look at me i'm so great very hard right we are not socialized but it's so much easier to say look at nupur she is amazing <laughs> so just turn to the person next to you to your right or to your left pick one and just say you are great she is great yay right and if we do this often enough we will create our own echo chambers coming to <laughs> what to do network <laughs> it's a fact so for me network has not been as much about work yes it has been supportive of work but network has actually been about learning contributing and receiving the more you put into your network the it's an investment and you will get your return on an investment if you are making it with heart with mind but with utter integrity and no expectation so beyond work my networks have grown through multiple industry initiatives whether it is supporting women on boards it is Well, this this is one topic i will show up anywhere to talk about so give you shall receive and you shall receive multifold in learning in opportunities in people who support you find your champions sponsors mentors there are more of people out there willing to help than you think in turn be a champion sponsor mentor it's never too early to start pick the fresher in your team and work with her uh pick a fresher not in your team yeah. work with her also so just give and i i think it really comes back um you gave me a very kind introduction half the work i do is sort of not my work it's not my job you do it because you can contribute we are all every single person in this room we are so amazingly privileged we have been born to families that have supported our education that have not held us back because of our gender so you kind of feel you owe it no you must give so give and thou shalt receive this is not working either is it needed in this room i don't know yeah i think it's working now is it working now <laughs> can i just add while the mic is we have ended up being a team where all the investors on the team are female not by design it's just ended up like that because we have no biases we are in we are launching a fundraise so we did some metrics we found that 40% of our portfolio the founder co-founder is female and we didn't look at that going in we said hey you know we don't want to be a we don't want to kind of classify people great founders are great founders great professionals are great professionals we just ended up being all women and i think that speaks to the whole bias issue that we we'll, we'll come back to that
same touch on a daily basis. If there is a relationship of respect, um, it will exist. It will not die away. One last try. Okay, this That's one works. <laughs> yeah. So, Ashu, how do you look at internal networks versus external networks? So to me, uh, both are equally important. And uh, they matter for different reasons. And there are very strong interlinkages. Uh, internal networks help you deliver better. They help you get a rain check of yourself. They help you raise your profile within the organization and very often identify opportunities that otherwise will not be that obvious. And that's simply because network is equal to linkages, right? And the fact that no organization or the world is not just about one person, it's a very natural extension. And by that very token, from an internal point of view, if you don't have conversations beyond your immediate team, your ability to relate to the larger organization comes down. Think about yourself as having just joined your job. Right? You don't know anybody beyond the people who interviewed you. So how are you going to get to know? So Networking is equal to get to know. And to me, a very, very simple thing about get to know, and actually women do a very good job of it. But when you're put on the spot sometimes, or you feel uncomfortable, you don't do a good job of it. And I'll link this up. Women actually are natural at breaking the ice or checking how the person in front is. Because that's a very core women trait. And that's a great trait. And that's the reason people want more women leaders, women managers, and so on and so forth. right? So that's the only trait that can actually help you overcome the awkwardness. So the get to know is equal to leveraging your innate trait to break the ice. To be able to walk into a room full of men and feel comfortable enough going and saying, hi, I'm so and so, or just saying, hi, how are you? So the difference between a men approach and a women approach is uh, men will introduce themselves saying, hi, I'm so and so from men. They'll go on. For women, if you just flip it around and say, hi, how are you? You will find it's a better conversation. And it's a dialogue. And a dialogue is always far more powerful than a one way. Because a dialogue lends it to share. So when you get to know people, you actually share. And it becomes two way. So you receive a lot, like uh, Anjali said. The same thing will apply when you're looking at growth, right? It's not only your manager who should become your limiting factor. And if you don't want to be limited by your manager, then you have to get to know others. And one thing that worked for me well was I used to always eat at my desk. And uh, because that helped me finish a lot of work and maybe go home a little earlier, because that's a constant thing on my mind. A colleague once said, that's the worst thing you do to yourself, which is why you have no idea on what is happening. And he dragged me, saying, from now on, we're all going to eat together. That gossip <laughs> was transformational. Believe you me, that was my first lesson, that men gossip 100 times more than women. And they gossip even about their mother-in-laws and everything. <laughs> and of course, the wives. So you know, it's so easy, actually, to become mainstream. And in that sense, these are very simple, normal things that can be very transformational for you as an individual. 
And why are they transformational? Because at that moment, you are still acting and behaving in your comfort zone. The problem is when you are put on the spot, you become awkward. When you become awkward, the people around you notice you in a not very good way. Right? So these are two very simple things and it is always easier to start at home, then work and then the broader sort of professional network. And why do I say home, office? Because home women are natural. So you extend that to work on the how are you and you really figure out and in the last two years and I will link it back to why I said beyond Zoom why women have done well on networking. The how are you, I hope all is well with you and the family is an easier conversation for women to have than men. There is research on this and I will share a very good anecdote on this which has said that women leaders have outperformed on employee satisfaction surveys, customer satisfaction surveys and investor presentations simply by the empathy they have exhibited. So S&P Global did a research about some 500 odd transcripts. The women investor day presentations were far better received because they had EQ all over and during COVID, think about it, one man standing and just reeling off 40 numbers was not resonating with anybody. And it was not for the sake of being empathetic, it was coming from within, coming from the heart. So that very shift, whether it is home, work or the network matters immensely. The only one thing that I will underscore in all of this is to make that a purposeful effort. See, you make the effort. Just make it count for yourself. Sometimes we don't know what an event is about, but we feel that that need to be there, right? So if you feel it's not on a topic that resonates with you, leave don't feel compelled to do the nine yards because men don't. They walk in and walk out at the drop of a hat. But you know, we feel so compelled and obliged. So you waste time, right? And then you spend all your evening feeling guilty. You left your child, you left your spouse, your mother-in-law, you didn't do this. Just leave. And if it's a topic that's interesting, you've invested in yourself. So that subtle shift I think makes all the difference and that changes the perspective of this dilemma whether it's transactional or strategic. Because I don't believe anything from a networking or relationship building point of view is transactional. Because when who will you know help you out, you can't predict. And one golden rule, people say seek out important. Please don't assume that anybody is unimportant. Support, advice, feedback can come from anywhere. And one trick one of my bosses in the past told me and it pays off even today is get to the, know the EA of the chairman you want to know better than anybody else. Now, if you decide that that EA standing in a corner in that networking event is not worth it because he doesn't have a fancy card, think again. That's just an example to say that, you know, it is the world, it's made up of all kinds of people. Leverage it well and leverage your own skills as a very powerful part of this world who makes this world tick and go for it. I think that's just so powerful, right? Go in with a feeling of confidence, approach it from a position of strength. Think of it as having a genuine interest in getting to know people, 
don't judge people don't assume they're important not important and just just get to know them just form relationships and it's not that difficult right it's just about having a chat it's not that difficult but i will stop my questions here because we would love to have an interactive session here so questions from the audience your panel is here i have more questions i can go on <laughs> come on ladies you have to cold call ah, i have cold okay there Just speak up. You can naturally speak up. Four years of mommyhood. <laughs> Happy to go first. Uh, mom guilt is for real. Uh, it is life long, <laughs> and that's depressing. And uh, it, it's a two-way phenomena. Uh, and uh, uh, bear me out on this, but once I've said it, you'll relate to it. There's mom guilt versus your mom. And, and and there is mom guilt versus your kids and uh, i have survived so far feeling uh, guilty sleeping feeling guilty waking up feeling guilty traveling being at meetings uh, i have been asked to make peace with it i have not made peace with it uh, i received lot of career advice from the who's who about saying you know once uh, your daughter uh, goes or your child goes to school uh, it will become better you won't get so stressed and then uh, my older daughter is married and nothing has changed from <laughs> a guilt point of view because even now she will say even now when i call you up you don't pick up my call and like x number of rings so that's enough to send me down one path but let me uh, now tell you what is the galvanizing aspect of mom guilt mom guilt should be used as a springboard right because you have to make peace with it i haven't i'm still trying and it's a lifelong journey and i'll keep learning but i learned to convert it into a springboard because what it did is it allowed me to stretch i would say beyond even capability to be able to deliver you know at home and at work at work you learnt to be faster to be able to serve those save those few minutes to be back home at home you learnt to give more of yourself because you were away and to my mind that has contributed to me becoming i think a better person than otherwise 
and I think it helped my family, my mom to feel good, my children to say, you know, mom works and I can work and I have two daughters and uh, end of the day, I keep telling them, you're going, I'm going to give you mom guilt in Virasat <laughs> and uh, please make the most of it because it helps you stay grounded, it helps you perform better. And then the pride you feel is of a different order. And so, you know, you said it in the context of children. So I just wanted to give you another perspective. It's not always about children. So don't look at it like that. And one last piece, and I know you didn't ask this. But, you know, we make career choices. As long as you made the choice, it's okay. You have a right to your life. You choose to accelerate your career, give it up, sit at home, it's your life. Why should you bother about he says, she says, they say, they will say, they won't say? Right? So you're doing extremely well. Congratulations for making those choices and making partners. Thank you. Anjali. So I have a somewhat different view. Um, <laughs> racked with guilt. I had children actually much later. Um, was building career and so on. I started my business career doing strategy consulting with McKinsey in New York. You just don't have time. Right? So you really just don't have time. And you said, okay, fine, I'll do it you know, when I make associate, I'll do it when I make EM. All of that happened. Eventually, I had to move back to India. I said, I'm going to move back to India and have my children here. In New York, I had amazing role models. I had Joanna Barsh, I had Isabel Coleman. And if you look these ladies up, one had three children, one had four children. And they seemed to have rocking careers. Uh, they were very disciplined with their time. But that, I think, is both male and female trait. Some people are just more disciplined with their time. Some people are not. Um, then I moved here. And for some reason, this is, I am really dating myself. This is, the, I moved back to India in 2000. It wasn't the norm. The full expectation was once you have children, you must look after them. Right? You chose to have children. So now you look after them. Then how can you work full time? So of course, that totally did not. I had not joined McKinsey to stop working when I became a mom. But needless to say, one goes through this journey because you have children and then you try to send them to school and then you find other moms are, I mean, they're doing things that you're not able to do. You, you feel judged. You do feel judged. You feel judged by your friends, by friends who love you, you feel judged because they have made other choices and God bless them for their choices. Uh, I'm not grudging them that at all. <laughs> the thing is, for me, what was very different, and I realize now in hindsight, I took it for granted, is I come from a family of fierce women. Not making something of your life was never an option. I would have lost respect in my family if I had not made something of my life and career. So that was, and I know there are two fierce women sitting here. Um, so that was one. Two, very, very fortunately, that, that whole consulting training, I, I was racked by guilt. I went and spoke to 50. I said, what do you do? You get data. I went and did. You can't do quantitative, so I went and did quality. With 15 women who I really respect, either friends or all iconic women leaders who were kind enough to give me time, which I go back to saying, please give time to anybody who asks you. I found two big takeaways. The happiest people were who had made their choices and were comfortable with them. I had, and I won't name her, I ran into her at the airport lounge in Hong Kong, both of us waiting, waiting to board a flight. She said, how are you doing? I said, you know, I have children, they're going to cry, and I worry about how they'll grow up. She said, what will happen? You know, they'll grow up, children grow up. I said, that's true, children do grow up. My mother, who never worked, it was a, you know, she was a master's in political science in her time, told me point blank, tumhare bachche no okay? I said, that's true. So basically, first of all, it's very hard to control this, but marry well. <laughs> there is a reason it is called parenting and not mothering. It is a two-person job. Parenting is a team sport. It's not your job alone. All the wonderful negotiating, influencing skills you exercise at work, kindly exercise at home. <laughs> yes. 
embrace your mother in law and your mother and your neighbor auntie and your friend and that other class mother who judges and, you and the nanny and the nanny embrace them all be hugely grateful because they are enabling you to pursue a career do not judge them your nanny absolutely build your home team the way you work build your work team you don't try and do everything at work right that be daft to do that why do you try and do everything at home build your home team invest in your home team even if you're spending all your salary on your home team it's okay <laughs> it's the option value of having a career i have not had much mom guilt i must confess i have two boys um could have been girls i'm disappointed i don't have a daughter my younger son knows that <laughs> um i've left them largely alone to their own devices and they seem to have done okay i've been there for every important thing i have attended ptas it's not me my husband has attended ptas we refuse to be on parents groups where there are only women only mothers he is added to the group because you know i might be on a plane when they send out an important message key thing manuel parenting is a two person job what you make of your career is up to you your children will respect you for it uh, i had this trade off conversation with my younger son once when he was very little in elementary school and he said but mama you never put your name up for class mom i said listen kiddo i have x number of free hours every day every week would you rather i spend them with you or entertaining your classmates it was such a clear answer i'd rather you spend them with me <laughs> end of story right so i have worked myself out of the food supply chain at home <laughs> i am not responsible for meals all of that you can do but you know your career has to be important to you if it's not important to you it will not be important to anybody i'll fall <laughs> i don't have much to add um but couple of things i think it is very very important to make peace with your choices and uh, you know having children and children being your priority does not mean you need to be there with them 24/7 you have to be there when it's important when it's critical when they need you you don't need to be hovering around them all the time and the sooner you realize that the better it is because half the time mom guilt is because you think your child needs you not necessarily because your child needs you and you know i'm not Very an expert well. my son is just 6 but my mom keeps telling me this the moment you leave home he's going to be fine so go you know he doesn't need you go um and the other thing is that you know it's not necessarily an or think about and that's a very enabling thought to have in your mind don't think of it as having to choose between the two but see how you combine the two and that can be very helpful do we have time for more questions or are we out of time we are so fortunate we like our work right so when work is not work it doesn't take energy away so don't let sort of even this notion of being a mother don't mommy track yourself there are enough people who will try and mommy track you so don't do it to yourself should be close so we are out of time but uh, we are requesting uh, anjali and ashu to please stay on for as long as they can and you can catch them offline so Pooja Aparna should be segue into the next segment. So thank you, thank you, Anjali, thank you, Ashish. Thank you. Pleasure hearing from you.